In this movie, we're going to focus on voltage controlling the Verbo spark filter, in particular using the frequency scan and spectral tilt sections. As I showed previously, you can hook up a controller such as a mod wheel to individual bands. And if you wanted, you could go ahead and patch an individual control voltage, an LFO, a random source, an envelope, to every one of these if you wanted to. But having these macro controls can be really nice, particularly as a performance control. I'm going to temporarily pull this out of the way. I'm going to set up a little arpeggio here. I'm going to go ahead and make the panning a little bit less severe. I want you to hear the even and odd band separately, but not for it to drive you crazy if you're using headphones. I recommend when you use any Verbos product that has a harmonic scan section, such as the harmonic oscillator, the bark filter, or the scan and pan, which I have down here, is that you set the width and center initially to their minimums. That makes them so small that it's easy to tune them out of the way so they don't accidentally add to one of these bands. Remember, everything adds together. Your sliders, the control voltages, the frequency scan and spectral tilt, and even the envelope followers inside the module, but we'll talk about that later. Spectral tilt is a way of favoring either the high frequencies or low frequencies. It will add to the highs and subtract from lows, or add to the lows and subtract from the highs. You can use the onboard knob here to go ahead and boost the bass. Or roll that over to affecting the highs. Very faint there since we don't have a lot of high harmonics in this sound. If I was to go up an octave, say, a little bit more prominent. And again, this control adds to and subtracts from the sliders. So if I get a basic EQ up here, I can go ahead and make it more bassy and roll out the high end. Or more, get more trebly and roll out the bass. I can do this manually with the knob, or I can apply control voltage. There is an inverting attenuator attached to the control voltage input. Rather than using the mod wheel, I think I'm going to use one of the knobs on my controller. I've got that patched into one of my expanders in the FH1. I'm boosting it a little bit in signal level, since I only have this set up to be plus or minus 5 volts. And the Verbus performs better if you have, say, a plus or minus 8 volt signal. And I can go ahead and use this knob to do the tilt to bass. The higher frequencies. So that's one approach. Another is to use the frequency scan. This basically gives you kind of like an animal underneath a rug moving along, boosting up bands of frequencies. You can decide how many bands are going to get boosted and how much they're going to get boosted by. Again, I can do this manually by go ahead and sweeping, say, the center control. You see on the red LEDs here as I go through the individual bands. It adds to the settings already there. So if I was to pull this all the way out, you can hear that travel through the individual bands. Now I have my width set so narrow that it's only going to one band at a time, landing in between the bands, then going to the next band. So I can park in between bands if I wanted to, or maybe by accident. But if I boost the width, I can take in adjacent bands. And now I can more smoothly move up and down the scale. I have quite a broad EQ here. So this almost becomes sort of a cutoff control as you move a band pass of variable width through the entire spectrum of the sound. You can attach an LFO or an envelope to this, or again, you can use a performance control. I'll borrow this knob that we had previously applied to the spectral tilt, and use that to go ahead and dial in where my center is. I can narrow it up by hand, or I can go ahead and use another control element, such as say one of my sliders, to affect the width. I'm going to turn the width back down to its minimum for now. I'm going to patch from that slider 
over to the width control voltage. Again, this is an inverting attenuator. In this case, I set up my sliders to be unipolar voltages to go from zero to plus five. So they're only going to increase the width. They're not going to decrease it. Let's go ahead and then boost up my width here. Let's go ahead and then pan around. I'll do this from the side so it's a little easier to see what's going on here. Now this particular controller keyboard even has an XY pad on it. It allows me to go ahead and move around in two dimensions to create control voltages. Now that would really give me a performance control. Let's go ahead and move over to those voltages instead. Where height is the width. In this case, I think I want to attenuate this so the bottom is full width in all my sound, and the top is where I really focus and really narrow down. Let's go ahead and invert that. There we go. I seem to hit the narrow band too fast, so I'll go ahead and reduce that voltage. Give myself a nice width boost down there. Narrow up to an individual band up there. Great. Now as I move left and right, I can go ahead and scan through these bands. Now when performing individual harmonics like that, I find it's good to always have a little bit of recognizable sound in there. So if you accidentally go off the board here or get in between bands, you still have something coming through. So I'm going to include just a little bit of the bass. So I have something in the left and right channels. And now go ahead and perform this. I like anything that makes my modular synth more performable and more interactive and more live. And having a variety of control voltage interfaces on my controller and a lot of voltage control inputs my module make that much more possible. Let's go ahead and turn this off for now. Now, in addition to these sliders and these knobs and these control voltage inputs, each band has its own envelope follower. That means it can follow the strength of the signal in that frequency band and output a voltage that matches it. You probably notice those yellow LEDs. That's the voltage indicating the strength in each band. Well, the bark filter allows you to use that as another control voltage source. And I'll demonstrate that in the next movie.